just because of the area it is. It's not, it's either too high or it's just in an area or the bleeding's not stopping. You've tried the pressure dressing and it's bleeding. Or when you come upon the wound, you see it and it's got a pulse, you know, versus just an ooze. Everybody's cut themselves. They see it where it just kind of seems to weep, to weep and ooze. That's venous bleeding. That can usually be stopped with the pressure. Um, arterial bleeding in most cases will not stop with just pressure because of the pressure from the artery pushing through is going to constantly knock that, that clot out of the way. And think water hose on mud in your driveway. You spray in that mud, that pressure and how it knocks the mud and moves it around is what happens inside. Um, and so that will never really form a clot. So you need to cut off blood flow to that area in order to allow the clot to form. And once that clot is formed, then we can go back later, reduce pressure on the tourniquet and hope and see if that helps. And so the next stage is tourniquets. This is the combat action tourniquet. It's called the CAT. Um, Eric knows it's really comfortable. That's why he's wincing. We haven't started yet. Um, but I'm going to talk about it. So you, again, this is available on the market. It's easy to find. Yes. So if I'm trying to use the pressure dressing either with the emergency bandage or the style we were up here and the wound is in like his armpit region or it's up here that I can't get a good wrap and get good pressure in the area, then we would want to move to a tourniquet. Or if it was even a lower extremity but it's bleeding so bad that the pressure is not working, then we're going to escalate to a tourniquet and we want to, want to stop the blood flow. So this is a commercial version. They are readily available on the market. I haven't priced these, about 20 bucks. Kind of expensive, but at the same time, is your life worth 20 bucks? Now, this isn't one of those things you have it and just saves your life because you have it in the pack. You've got to know how to use it. You need to train with it. So buy two. Practice with one, spray paint it, mark it, that way you know it's been used. Because these are intended for single use only. Um, <coughs> wear and tear, using them, you can degrade some of the materials and they should break. And over time, I would hate for you to use that one you've been practicing with and then it bust on you and when you need it. When you need it, absolutely. Now I will tell you, I taught a combat, combat lifesaver class once a month for two years and I used the same tourniquets and I never had one break but in trauma I had one break that was never used it was brand new so they are prone to fault so just be careful I so I always say if you're gonna buy one buy two practice with one have the other one ready so you're not running risk of breaking your fiber and degrading at all Yes. So you you stretch out that nylon in here, and then you just have to tighten it longer and longer. It's a really good point. So because you, you, the way this works is we twist this around, and this nylon strap here pulls the pressure, and that's what causes the tourniquet effect. Well, this is nylon. It's prone to stretching, and when it's being held in that under that tension it's going to stretch and elongate and then it takes longer to use so, and it will be less effective. Um, so there's some fancy technical terms for the parts on this. Ready? Stick. That, that's it. And then friction bar. You know, this is actually called the windlass, but does it really matter at the end of the day if you know what this is called? Call it a stick. Call it the thingy that you turn. I don't care. You'll know what it is. Um, this is the friction bar. Now this is kind of important to kind of know the name because it tells you what it does. It's the friction bar. It applies friction to the strap to not allow it to come undone. And so it's got Velcro. With Velcro and then the teeth on this bar are what help hold it in place when you're cranking down on that, on that stick, applying the pressure. So it's got two portions on a friction bar, just kind of like the straps in your backpack, and it works the exact same way. When you're using an upper extremity, i.e. the arm, you only need to be through one part of the friction bar. And when you set this up, if you have one of these, see how I've got it folded over on itself? 
I call that a monkey bite. Because when you need this, we mentioned it earlier, your adrenaline's gonna be pumping, your hands are gonna be shaking, you're not gonna have the fine motor skills to untie your shoes or even write notes in a pad. So you need to be able to do things with big grip. And the way I would open these is I would use, if I could open it with my fingers, my fingertips and the palm of my hand, then I knew it was ready to be used easily under high stress situations. And so the way I keep these is I have this folded up with that monkey bite. So when I pull it out, I shake it, I can grab that with, with that and pull on it. And I'm gonna, I'll go over my own arm first so we can show it. And I, the way this works is you wanna put it as high up the extremity as possible. The old, the old adage was two inches above the wound, but not within two inches of a joint. Yes, that is good practice because it saves more limb. With advances in medicine nowadays, these tourniquets can be in place six to eight hours, extended with somebody who knows what they're doing, 24 hours before limb death happens and occurs. So, like, think, uh, you've also got to think, is it worth him losing part of his arm or his whole life? Um, and the reason we're gonna tell you to go all the way at the top of the extremity, the highest part of the arm or the highest part of the leg, is because as the body goes down to the, the, the fingertips and the tips of the toes, the blood vessels get smaller and they get bigger. Think of like this hackberry tree right beside us. At the ground is where it's the thickest, and up at the top is where the limbs are the thinnest, and there is a bunch more of them. Same thing in our vascular system and our arteries. So, up here we have a really long, big bone, and same thing right here in our leg, we have the femur and the humerus. Really big bone, really big vessel, and there's only one of each. Compress those against each other and you cut off blood flow to the rest of it. Does that make sense? Kind of easy? Or you can go to the top and you can squeeze the forearm together and you've got two bones with the artery hanging out being protected in between it, and then you've got to crush those bones into each other to cut off that blood flow and you may not even get it done completely. So always go to the top of the extremity as high as you can get it when you apply it. If you're applying this to yourself, I recommend putting it to where you pull it towards you rather than trying to pull it away from you. It's counterproductive. And so you wanna get this as tight as you can with the strap. The tighter you get it with the strap, the less you have to twist the, wind, the stick to, to actually make it effective. So you go back and you just hit the Velcro, or look a little faster. <laughs> <laughs> that was for Eric, because the army you can't call it Velcro. It's hook and loop fastener. <laughs> so you put it on across the Velcro as tight as you can, and then you start applying your pressure with the stick, and you twist. <coughs> and these are not comfortable. They hurt. It hurts a lot. They're gonna cry. Ow! Please stop. Don't stop. Tell them to suck it up, you're saving their life. You know, a little bit of pain, a little discomfort versus getting really sleepy for a really long time. So this is effective. I don't have a pulse. And you can go one more. Oh, and so now this is in place and it's very effective. <laughs> um, the problem with this is you've got to secure this because just like with the, with the blood clots when we have the bandage and the pressure dressing, you don't want to bust it, you don't want to bump it and ruin your clot. You really don't want to bump this, knock this out, and lose all your pressure. Blood flows back, my hand's got a pulse again already because you just blew that clot. Remember when we were talking about the mud on your driveway with the water hose? That clot's gone, and they're not gonna form another one. So, what we, what we do is it's got this nice little fancy piece of Velcro here. Would you want this? Listen, do you want that to, to be your life insurance? <laughs> now, tape it, wrap an ace wrap around it, do whatever you can. <laughs> So put that on there, sure. Grab some tape, Gorilla tape, duct tape, medical tape, whatever you have. And if you don't have tape, use bandanas. 
use anything and everything you have to tie this into place and then sling that arm to that body as well because that's the last thing you want to do is bump this and blow those clots. Does that make sense? Does anyone have any questions? So that's upper extremity, singer, single friction bar. Now when we go through the leg, you do need to go through both portions of the friction bar. And to apply it, it is harder to get that, that strap done. So you have to take some time, and I will abuse you for that one if you're laying out down there. It's a little harder for me to apply it to myself on the leg and talk about it while I'm doing it so you can see. So, the way I store it in the bag is not conducive for applying to a leg in a timely manner because what I have to do is undo this and pull it. So it's good for that. Going on an arm, because the arm is so short, it's real easy to just loop this over the arm and get it up high. To try to loop it over his leg, one, I'm gonna have to pick his leg up, pick his leg up, fight to get this up into position and, and get it into position when it's just a lot easier to undo it here, pull it out, pull this around, line the jewels. Please, when we apply these, <laughs> allow them time to make sure everything is safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take a moment, please. Don't, don't just rush into it. Yes, I want you to try to move with some urgency, but it's not, not worth making him a soprano. And so from here, it's going to take a lot more pressure than you think. And it, like I said, it's not comfortable. And so we're going to slowly crank this down. I'm not going to crank it down. That's not good. Okay. Here's the button. And so now it's effective. It probably actually needs to be tightened one more time, to be honest. But I'm not going to do it because I don't want her to hurt me. And so we'll let that go. And hit release. Where do you check pulse? On this, there's a couple spots. Um, the best place is behind the knee, and you have to push in behind the knee or behind the ankle, kind of where he was just checking. If you find your ankle bone and heel, right there in between there you can touch. The easiest place is called the dorsalis pedis, and is on the very top of the foot, but it's not present in 40% of the population. So, you... Yeah, you have to take off their shoes and touch their nasty feet. So, but I would hate to tell you to always look for the top of the foot because, like I said, in about 40% of the population, it's not, it's 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 present, but it, you can't feel it because of its location. It's kind of moved on everybody. So, behind the ankle, between the ankle and the heel, is a really good spot, or behind the knee. Um, it's a little awkward because you're gonna have to push up. So if you think you're gonna push at the bottom of the leg, the thigh bone here. You're pushing up and into that spot and you can feel it, you'll find it. Um, you have to push in and get it after it though. It's not just uh, kind of like here at the wrist, you can touch it. You gotta jam your fingers kind of a couple, of, like an inch into there and you can find it there. 